the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And well, also with you. Welcome to this uh, service of spiritual communion uh, from St. Luke's Anglican Church in the Diocese of Niagara in, in, in Burlington. And we welcome you from all over the world who are watching. Uh, we hope that you understand that uh, by your desire to be in communion, uh, through this spiritual communion, we do form a communion. So welcome. We begin with our first hymn, We the Lord's People. Almighty God, to you, to you all, all hearts, hearts are, are open, open, all desires known, and, and from, from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy upon us and, and write both, both these your laws in, in our hearts, hearts we, we beseech you. you. Let us pray. Stir up, O Lord, the wills, the wills of your, of your faithful, faithful people, that richly bearing the fruit of good works, we may by you be richly rewarded. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us uh, listen to our readings. 
A reading from the letter to the Romans, chapter 13, verses 8 to 14. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together the words from Psalm 149. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Sing, Sing to the Lord a new, a new song, song, his praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in its maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with victory. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with fetters and their nobles with chains of iron to execute on them the judgment decreed. This is glory for all his faithful ones. Praise to the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, glory to, you, to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to, to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. We often struggle as we try to live out our faith and what it means to be a Christian. It is a struggle because living the Christian life is not a matter of black and white. There are laws to follow, of course. There are the Ten Commandments, and there is the great commandment to love God and to love our neighbor. But so many things in our lives fall into gray areas that are matters of the heart. We can search for rules to guide us in making the right decisions in such matters. But when it comes down to it, 
when it comes down to it, God calls us to do the loving thing. Love is the key word in both the epistle and today's gospel. If we always do the loving thing, we find that we are following God's rules. In fact, if we always did the loving thing, then there would be no need for rules. It is our frailty, our inability to put our neighbor first, our inability to see Christ in others that dictates our need for rules. And it is that frailty which is addressed by Matthew in today's Gospel reading. There we are given a process for dealing with conflict. If another member of the church sins against you, go point out the fault while the two of you are alone. If you are not listened to, take one or two other members along with you. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. If the offender refuses to listen to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Let us consider, first of all, <coughs> what it does not mean. It does not mean that we cut such people off. It is important to remember how Jesus treated tax collectors and sinners. So how do we resolve conflicts in our faith community? It becomes especially difficult when we refuse to acknowledge that such conflicts even exist. That is, first of all, a personal responsibility. Confronta confrontation is something that very few people enjoy, and most will do almost anything to avoid it. It requires skill and sensitivity if it is to allow a relationship to continue. The Gospel reading recognizes the struggle of the early church to work harmoniously. There are disputes among believers that require resolution. Now confession and absolution are a part of our liturgy. When we pass the peace in worship, it symbolizes our willingness to be reconciled with one another and that we value the relationship higher than we value our own point of view, for example. The Gospel then continues, For when two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is not a concept that is original to Jesus. It comes from the Jewish faith that Jesus practiced. In the Jewish faith, it is known as Shekinah, to quote from Talmudic writings, when two sit and there are between them the words of the Torah, that is when the scriptures are open between them, the Shekinah, the presence of God, rests between them. For us, the divine presence is Jesus himself. If we share in the communion of the faith and we are willing to work through a situation of strained and troubled relationship, there is no reason why such an encounter cannot be offered in prayer. The idea behind such prayer is to allow God to work in and through our lives. We struggle together sometimes as the people of God. At times of national distress, at times of instability, in moments of personal conflict, or in the midst of a pandemic, we continue to trust in God and who helps and protects us, and we always keep the Shekinah, the presence of God, open between us. If we do that, then we are able to fulfill the law, to love one another as God loves us. In a certain village, there was a lovely old church which had fallen on hard times. It was racked with dissent. The people who came to church found themselves merely going through the motions, praying with heavy hearts. In a wooded area on the edge of town, an old rabbi had built a retreat. 
he came there from time to time to fast and pray. No one ever spoke with him. But whenever he appeared, the word would be passed around the village. The rabbi walks in the woods. They felt sustained by his presence. One day the priest decided to visit with the rabbi and to open his heart to him. So after the morning Eucharist, he set out through the woods, and as he approached the hut, he saw the rabbi standing in the doorway, his arms outstretched in welcome, as though he had been waiting there for some time. They embraced as long-lost brothers. The rabbi motioned for him to enter, and in the middle of the room stood a table with the scriptures open on it. They sat there for a moment in the presence of the book. Then the two of them burst into tears. They cried until they could cry no more. After the tears had ceased to flow, the rabbi lifted his head. You and your people are serving God with heavy hearts, he said. You have come to ask my advice. I will give you a teaching, but you can repeat it only once, and after that no one must ever say it aloud again. He looked at the priest straight in the face and said, The Messiah is among you. For a while all was silent. Then the rabbi said to him, You must go now. And he left without a word and without ever looking back. The next Sunday, during the sermon, he told the people about the teaching from the rabbi and that it was never to be spoken aloud again. Then he looked at each member in the congregation. The rabbi said that one of us is the Messiah. The saying startled them. What could it mean? They asked themselves. Is John the Messiah? Or Mary? Or Thomas? It can't be Thomas. He's too bad-tempered. Am I the Messiah? What could all this mean? The teaching puzzled them. But no one ever mentioned it again. As time went by, they began to treat one another differently. They lived with one another as if they had found something special. They prayed together as people genuinely looking for something. Visitors to the church found themselves deeply moved by the lives of the people. And before long, newcomers were coming from far and wide to be nourished by the worship. The community began to grow and flourish. The rabbi no longer walked in the woods. But somehow or other, the people who had taken his teaching to heart were sustained by his powerful presence. Conflict in a diverse community is inevitable. There are diversities of opinion that need to be heard. Such differences of vision are not right or wrong. They are simply part of our struggle to live the Christian life. The way to deal with such conflict lies in seeing Christ in one another and in praying for each other that Christ may be served. This wonderful mystery about the presence of Christ is the reason why my favorite blessing ends with, may you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. When you do that, you will realize that the Messiah does indeed walk among us. Amen. Let us say together the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, earth, of all that is seen, seen and, and unseen. unseen. We, we believe, believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God, begotten not made, of of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For For us and for our our salvation he came came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and and was made human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has has spoken through the prophets. prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we we look look for the the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Son, let us pray to God who governs all heaven and earth. Inspire your church always to press forward to the goal of which she is called. Make all her members faithful servants of your will. We offer our prayers to you for all who worship in the Diocese of Niagara. We remember Bishop Susan Bell and all clergy as we take steps into reopening our places of worship. We pray for our diocesan prayer partner, St. Paul's Jarvis, Reverend Richard Morris Rector, and the people of that parish. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Look with mercy on a world when the greed of gain deprives many of their rights. Guide those in authority to govern by the true values of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. We remember all those whose lives have been affected by hurricanes, monsoons, and other natural disasters. May those people know of your guiding hand to lead them through the wilderness they now find themselves in. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. In our dealings with others, teach us not to trust our own desires, but to follow where Christ has led. Make us honest in our work, seeking the good of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. We pray for all frontline workers, emergency workers, and all who are fighting to reduce the impact that COVID-19 is having on our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Bring healing to those who are sick in body or mind or spirit. Lift up those whose spirits are weary, and we remember especially those who have asked for our prayers. Bernice Peterson, Jane Ross, Paul Benson, Doug McDonald, June, Alex, Nick, Jane Gatke, Christopher, Jeff Smith, Hannah, Sue, Hayes and Haywood, Wendy, Bev, Peter Robertson, Melanie and family, Marilyn, Monica, Terry Raybould, Cheryl Clark, Mary Sherwood, Ocean Tomlinson, Allie, Jim Glass, and others we hold in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. In the glow of our Paschal candle, we pray for those who have died, remembering especially Betty Connolly, and those who are written forever in our hearts. Grant that they shall indeed see the face of Christ and live with him forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Let Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine forever in our hearts and draw us to that light where you live in radiant glory. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, We We confess confess that we have sinned against you in in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. 
we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace. And uh, now we will sing together our hymn, Healer of Our Every Ill. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you 
the God and Father of all. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we sing together the words our Savior taught us. Take away the sin of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy upon us. us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy upon us. us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant, Grant us, us your, your peace. peace. Dear friends, I invite you in this moment, wherever you may be, to receive Christ in communion with the saints and the gathering of God's people, unseen and yet present with us now. Let us pray. We receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. We, we welcome, welcome your, your presence, presence in us, us and, and together, together proclaim our, our love for, for you. you. With our hearts, minds, our souls, and our strength, with the saints we worship you, with the angels we adore you. With, With your, your whole church, church we, we proclaim, proclaim your, your reign. reign. Come to us and, and make, make us one in you. in you. Amen. I worship and adore you, Lord Jesus Christ, present in bread and wine, and present in your people who are gathered in spirit. In this moment, I join with them to receive you in my heart. May you, enthroned on the altar, be now enthroned in my heart. May you, present in bread and wine, feed and renew my soul. May you, who gives yourself to us again, fill us with grace and heavenly blessing. Even as I am fed, may my hunger increase for you and for your reign of justice and peace. Amen. Amen.
Father, your Your word and sacrament sacrament give us food and life. May we who have shared in holy things bear fruit to your honor and glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord Jesus, who walks on wounded feet, walk with you to the end of the road. May the Lord Jesus, who serves with wounded hands, help you to serve one another. May the Lord Jesus, who loves with a wounded heart, be your love forevermore. Bless God wherever you go, and may you see the face of Jesus in everyone you meet. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Just wanted to uh, mention, to remind you once again, uh, there's the diocesan service at 11 a.m. on the diocesan Facebook page. And uh, also, please join us for our coffee hour. Uh, Sorry, the diocesan service is at 10 a.m. on our diocesan Facebook page. And our coffee hour is at 11 a.m. And I hope that you can join us then.